Hey guys, uh, Austin here again. Well, you knew that. Um, I've been thinking of different things that I could share here on the blog, vlog, and um, you know, a lot of it's been about style. Um, but I also wanted to share, um, share share kind of a two part thing that's been on my mind. So this is entitled "Why I'm Not Married at 24." And the, the reason I say this is because I've, within the last two or three years, I've seen maybe four plus of my friends get engaged and married. And I'm, I'm super excited for them because, you know, I've gotten to see the beginning of their relationships and, and how it developed and, and seeing the, the tough times that they went through that got them to the, to the strong relationship that they are now. And, and I, I want that for myself. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I'm a huge romantic and I love um, love the idea of, of having that special someone to, you know, come home after you've had a hard day and be able to talk to them and just say, you know, I'm, I'm kind of struggling right now and, you know, I'd, I'd love a shoulder to cry on. Or, you know, I can't wait to tell you this new exciting thing that happened or, you know, this, that, and the other. And... I thought, you know, I would probably be in a more committed relationship at this point than, um, I, I thought, you know, I thought I would be at a point where, you know, I'd be maybe getting married soon or making bigger steps to that. Um, but I'm not, and I'm okay with that. Uh, that is something that I have not been able to say in a long time because, uh, a lot of my near and dear friends are, you know, you might be watching this and. Um, I'm thankful for the things that you guys have taught me to, to be the man I am today. Um, but, you know, when I'm passionate about something, I, I jump all in. Um, which leads me into the second part of this video, which I've never opened up on social media about this. But it's something that I wanted to share because uh, it was probably one of the bigger things that has ever happened to me. So in 2016, there was this girl and she, she's beautiful, very sweet, very kind hearted. And we were a part of the same student ministry together. And we were actually on the, on, on the same team. And I mean, I always thought she was beautiful. I'm like, oh, she, you know, she's pretty cool, and we would hang out. And um, I got back from a mission trip, and she's like, hey, you know, I want to hear, I want to hear about this. I want to hear about your trip. So I come back, and I'm telling her about my trip. And at one point, I'm sitting down um, across the table at this coffee shop, looking at her, and I'm going, huh? I wonder if this is gonna be her, like the one that people talk about. So as things begin to develop more, you know, you know, obviously I catch feelings and uh, she she catches a small case as well. And she starts to open up a little bit more, but she's still she's still very guarded, which is understandable because she had a lot of um, bad things happen to her, which caused her to be very guarded. But because she had a lot of characteristics that I find attractive um, and the characteristics that I wanted in you know, my wife to be, you know, I, I, I felt she had those. So, you know, things were going well, went on a couple of dates. And at one point she goes, you know, Austin, I, uh, I, I got to tell you something. I said, okay, what's, what's going on? And she said, you know, there was this guy, uh, not too long after you had asked me out, you know, on a, on a date, she's like, he had asked me out too. Um, I, I told him, no, you know, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not interested in him, uh, but I, I just wanted to share that with you. You know, there was a guy who had interested me, but I'm, I'm focused on you. Well, I appreciate that. You didn't need to share that, but I'm very glad that you did. And it made me feel very special. And um, I tell her about my parents and how close I am with them. And she really wanted to meet them. And so uh, my parents and her got to meet up and my parents fell for her. They're like, Man, she's awesome. This is fantastic. Yeah, she's good. Um, she's been actually 
a lot of one one time with my my parents like she would travel out of town to go see them by herself and that really made me fall so much harder because she she loved my parents as much as I did do and so that made me fall even harder um And then she started to kind of hit a wall again. And so what I wanted to do was, you know, just continue to show her and tell her, hey, you know, I'm here. I want you to know that um, I'm interested, but please know that, um, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not gonna hurt you. Um, Just just let me in, just trust me. And, And she would let down a small barrier and let me in a little closer. Let me a little closer. And I, I did the same thing. Um, I dove head over. I mean, I was head over heels for her. Um, I never said I love. Yeah, I never said I love you to her, but I was in love. I was. And, you know, she took some time to to really think and open up to me to, to get to that deeper level. And so um, I had not seen any red flags up until this point. And I'm like, I'm going to ask her, I'm like, I want her to officially be my girlfriend. And she, um, I I, I surprised her and took her to her favorite spot um, in this park. I blindfolded her and walked her there. So it really forced her to trust me. Um, But she, uh, she walked with me there. I wrote her a note and just explained my whole heart and, um, she gave me a very sweet kiss and she's like and and keep in mind anytime we would have a conversation a deep conversation a hard conversation she's like okay i need time to process this i said okay i'll I'll give you that time and she uh she's like i need time to process i'm like okay that's fine um You know, a couple of days go by. I'm like, hey, you know, what's what's going on? How you feeling? She's like, you know, I'm 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 still processing. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Because I'm like, you know, I'm gonna give her time. I mean, she uh, she was gonna go to seminary um, out of state, and I started looking. I mean, my the state that she went to, um, my great great grandfather lives there. And I'm like, okay, it's like 30, 40 minutes from where she is. I mean, he'd probably be okay. I would pay him rent and stuff like that. I'm I'm gonna move there. And I was gonna move to be closer to her. I mean, I was gonna give everything up for her. Um, I'm like, you know, with what I wanna do, getting the menswear, I'll, I can make it happen there. I can make it happen. And then she goes on a mission trip. And, you know, I'm obviously not just like, hey, I hope God is showing you great things. Do you still wanna be my girlfriend? You know, I just, I still wanna be respectful of that. So we were chit chatting and it was good to see her and talk to her. and. Um, the last couple days of her being on that trip, I just felt something was different. And then when she got back into town, she goes, Hey, can we talk? I said, yeah. And I knew what her answer was going to be, but I didn't want it to be the case. And show up and give her a hug and I just said you know hey you know just tell me what's going on she goes you know I've just fallen in love with your family I just I think they're great um you know how much I care about you um but I can't I can't do it and that was a really tough pill to swallow and uh I remember like almost on my hands and knees begging her like, Hey, please can re- reconsider something. She's like, I just, I can't. I said, is there anything I can do? She goes, no, I'm sorry. So left. And I'm like, okay, this is going to suck. This hurts so bad, but it'll be okay. I'm, I'm going to make it through. I go um, to be a counselor at a, at a camp. And I, I get back to my room and, and my phone had blown up. 
and I had a friend who was actually out of the country and she was texting me and I thought it was odd that she texted me. She goes, hey, hope you're doing okay. It's just you were on my mind. All right, that's wonderful. Yeah, thanks. And uh, had another friend reach out and it was odd. Um, she's like, hey, you know, just you're awesome. I just want to let you know you're awesome. I'm like, okay, this is odd. Another friend of mine goes, hey, so I saw you guys aren't together anymore. And I assumed that because we were part of the same functions, the same communities, she, he just didn't see her and I walking physically together anymore. And I said, yeah, you know, we, we broke up. And he goes, yeah, I figured. And I felt like that was odd that he said that. And she had actually texted me too. I'm like, okay, I'll look at her message. She goes, hey, just want to let you know, um, since things didn't work out between you and me, you know, things kind of fell in line with, with me and this other guy. And I've never seen this name before that she shared with me. And I'm going, I don't know who this is. And she's like, just know that I didn't lie to you or anything like that. I still care about you. And the long message. And I'm like, what? So I go to her Facebook and she's got her arm around the neck of this guy. The title says, well, I guess the cat's out of the bag. You know, we're, we're official. And this was a couple weeks, maybe a month after we had broken up. And my heart just sank. And I started getting really pissed too because I saw a lot of my friends who wanted us to be together. They were liking this picture. Oh, good for you. I'm so happy for you. And so I'm hurt, angry, confused, all those negative feelings. And... I'm, I, I'm, I'm just in shock. And I show it to one of my roommates and he goes, are you serious? I said, I just want to vomit. I want to scream. I'm, I'm livid right now. So I just had to, I had to go away. And so I grabbed my guitar and just started playing worship music. I'm like, I, I got to run to God. And I just, I was hurting too bad. And I call her, she didn't answer, called her again. She didn't answer. I start praying. I'm like, God, you're better. I, I need you. I, I'm hurting. I don't know what this is. As things begin to unfold, I find out that said guy was on the mission trip with her. There's a pretty good chance that there were conversations had on that mission trip. And... Maybe that's when they started, which technically her and I are still together. I can't confirm that she cheated, but that's what it felt like. And I just felt like she had ripped open my chest and just punched my heart. And I had just never been hurt that bad before. And my, my friend saw that and they knew that. And even her best friend goes, she never told me about this guy. And I think you were so much better for her. And she's like, she's, she's not being herself. I don't know what it is. She's not being herself. Uh, I'm sorry that you had to go through this. I, I am too. I don't know how to deal with this. I've never had to deal with anything close to this before. So she goes out of town, the, the new semester starts. Uh, it got to the point where my parents were asking me, hey, how are you doing? How, like, what's going on? And um, anytime I would talk about it, my heart would just, my anxiety would increase and my heart would just start bumping really fast. And, and I'm an asthmatic and my throat would close up. And I said, I physically cannot talk about this anymore because it, it harms me. I can't, I can't speak on it anymore. <sighs> So I just, I'm, I, I was never mad at God. I'm just confused. God, what's, what's the plan on this? What, what are you trying to show me? Show me something. Give me healing. I, I, I need help. So anytime I would think about her and the times that we had together and then the pathway she was choosing, again, that anxiety would, would come up and I was angry, sad, 
and um, I, I dealt with bouts of depression. It was never like clinically depressing. I never took medication or anything for it, but just these waves of depression would almost physically bring me to my knees. There was one point where I went to a friend's house having a good time laughing, all this stuff, and then everyone starts going to bed and boom, it just hits. And I remember just, you know, just collapsing and sitting and just sitting against the dishwasher just with this wave just crashing over me. And it didn't ever, never said anything, but it was just this feeling of emptiness and lonely and it just hurt. It just hurt so bad. So I end up seeing her. Um, and we, we had the same, um, she, we had a lot of mutual friends um, in this organization that we were a part of. And she was going to show up because it was a couple weeks after she had started seminary and she was going to come back. And I knew the date she was coming back. I knew the time that she would walk in. Um, my friends knew that. My friends knew that I was going to see her and they were checking on me like, hey, are you doing? Are you okay? And keep in mind, like, these are people who were still good friends with her and me. So they were in a hard situation going, I mean, you're friends with her too. It's, it's okay, but it's tough. So I, I was part of the worship band and um, I, I remember being on stage looking out and just trying to find her. And the moment she walked in, my, my mom was actually there that night too. And she walked up and she just ran over and gave her a big hug because she still cared for her. She loved her. And it's, I, I didn't have anything negative against that. She just, she had a, a, a deep connection with her. That's okay. I'm not going to be mad at that. And it was very sweet to see, but very hard at the same time because it wasn't what it once was. So after the service is over, you know, I needed to go talk to her. And and one thing to mention as well is that um, I had a golden retriever of 16 years and he was a beautiful dog, super sweet, very kind. Uh, but he ended up passing away maybe a week or so before uh, I found out the news. And so I jokingly was talking to people about like, well, you know, my girl left me and my dog died. So if she stole my tractor, I could write a country song. So I ended up walking up to her and you know, said, Hey, how you doing? She was like, I'm good. How's it? How's seminary? I'm good. How are you doing? And I said, I've been better. And she goes, I know. I'm so sorry. And it just, words just started coming out. She's like, awesome. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to hurt you. I didn't mean that. I'm, I'm very sorry. And I go, it's all been forgiven. I've forgiven, I've forgiven you. I wasn't mad at her at all. And it was so, it was so, it was so tough to say that, but I meant it. And she just said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. And <sighs> I'll, this is the biggest part that I'll never forget. She, she starts crying and I, and I reach out and I, and I wipe away the tear from her face and gently caress her cheek. And it was like for a moment, it's like we were back. And I said, it's okay. Like, I'm not mad at you. I mean, I, I forgive you. Like, it, we're okay. And I knew that we would never get back together. And that was never the goal. But... I ended up giving her a big hug and just held her close, just cradled her right here and just like, you know, tucked her under my chin and just held her for five, 10 seconds. But it felt like an eternity. And I remember looking up and her new boyfriend is back there seeing everything. The jerk side of me is, I don't care if you, I want you to see this. I want you to see that I'm, I love her more than you do. And then at one point, I just, I hear, she's not yours. You got to let her go. So I physically had to let her go. And that just hurt so bad. It, it was tough, but it was good. It was well needed. 
between the summer of 2016 and 2017, um, I had over 200 asthma attacks due to this depressive state I was in and um, just physically wasn't wasn't well. Um, and it just hurt. I'm going, how could someone that I loved for and cared the most hurt me so bad? I don't, I don't get it. What did I do wrong? Where was my, where did I not measure up? And what my parents were constantly reiterating to me and my close friends too is that, you know, your value is not in another person. You know, your value is in, um, your value is in Christ alone. And he sees value in you and he's going to teach you something through this. And it's 2019 now, and that happened in 2016. So three years later, I mean, I've learned a lot, but I'm still learning from it. I still don't know if I've learned the whole lesson. And every now and then, like, I think about the hurt. And yeah, it does hurt to have someone look at you and say, no, I choose this person, not you. After you've invested hours and months to build this trust with this person, and you felt cheated on and you felt cheapened and you didn't feel valued that's very hard to go through I had a lot of friends help me through it and I've been blessed and lucky enough to have a great support group um, and if you guys are watching this again guys thank you um, I don't really have a big story or a big build up to the very end it's, it, it's just my story that's part of it. It's part of what's helped me build my confidence to where I am now. Like I said, that was by far the hardest thing I've ever gone through. But I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, you're not alone. There are others out there fighting. And, it, and it's tough. It's hard. Um, I believe I was at one point depressed and dealt with that. But after a while it was taken away and I've, I've been very blessed to have that and not deal with that anymore. But it was a deep bruise and it, every now and then it does, you know, just kind of grab you. That's my story. And, you know, I thank you for listening and I hope this helped you in some way. Um, I mean, it was hard to share, but I wanted to share it. I'm an open guy. So, thanks guys.